When I was watching MC Toon's channel lately, I noticed something that I had noticed before in the comment section of many flat earth debunkers. The explanation of Globus of how buoyancy works. Hear what MC Toon says about it. Here's what happens. Helium goes up because there's a second force acting on it other than gravity, buoyancy. Now buoyancy is the result of gravity. Buoyancy causes um, things that have less downward acceleration than something else in a, in a fluid to go up, right? So you have air, more dense, more gravity pulling, more force due to gravity pulling on it downward than helium, put helium in a balloon. And, and that, that balloon with the helium in it has less downward force than the air. So that then it's just a, a, con a contest between the air and the helium. Which one gets pulled down harder? The air, then the helium goes up. That's a different force acting on it simultaneously. He paints buoyancy as a battle between air that is pulled harder downward by gravity and the helium balloon that has a lesser downward force acting on it. Kengo4457 in the comment section says this. Air is pulled down displacing the helium balloon up. You could say these are useful middle school explanations were it not that the battle explanation doesn't explain why the hel helium balloon goes up and the displacing explanation is just wrong. What is the real explanation of how buoyancy works? First of all we have to agree upon this. The pressure in liquid and gases exerted at any point from a gas or liquid at rest is affected by a number of factors but always acts equally in all directions. The force exerted by a fluid on a surface always acts perpendicular to that surface. This is important for why buoyancy works opposite to gravity. Let's assume a container with liquid in it. You can imagine a vertical column of liquid with fixed horizontal dimensions. If we take a plane in the middle of that column, we see that the downward force acts upon that plane, being the weight of the column above the plane. Notice that weight in physics is defined as the force exerted on the mass of a body by a gravitational field. But an upward force is also acting on that plane. This force is caused by the weight of the liquid around that plane that, as we have established, exerts a force in all directions, so also perpendicular to the plane upward. Since the weight of the column with the same horizontal dimensions as the plane is the same as the weight of the column right above the plane, both forces cancel out and the plane is at rest. This is why under constant circumstances a liquid is at rest. Now let's imagine a cube with the same dimensions as the plane. Now the situation differs. First of all the cube has weight of its own. The column of liquid right above the cube has the same height as the column in the example with the plane, so the downward force due to the weight of that column is the same. However, the upward force due to the surrounding uh, liquid is greater than in the example of the plane, because the column from the surface to of the liquid to the bottom of the cube is longer, therefore its weight will be greater. Therefore, the upward, upward force exerted at the bottom of the cube will be greater. If we look at the balance of these three forces, the weight of the cube, the downward force and the upward buoyant force, it is no longer in equilibrium. The upward force is greater than the downward force and the weight of the cube combined. Therefore, the cube will go up. I used planes, cubes and columns all with the same horizontal dimensions, so I could talk about force. If you would forget about the dimensions, ergo the volumes of the liquids and the cube, 
all of this comes down to objects with a density less dense than the medium they're in go up. This looks dangerously like Anthony Delia Riley's relative density disequilibrium, but it only can work when there is a downward force acting on mass, a downward force we call gravity. A prerequisite Sleeping Warrior conveniently forgets to mention. I know it's a somewhat less sexy explanation than that of MC Toon and Kango 4457, but it answers the why questions a lot more accurate. In any case, a lot more accurate than the explanation of Anthony Delia Riley, aka Sleeping Warrior. His is just the conclusion of Archimedes' law, leaving out what causes it, gravity. And he has to leave it out, because if he would mention it, it would ruin the flat earther's silly narrative that gravity doesn't exist. <laughs>